Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Take MRI, and this is a 44-year-old male who fell recently, injured the elbow joint. They went to the ER, and they said everything looked good on x-rays, but there was a lot of swelling, so they came in to get an MRI, and here we have a coronal view, and everything looks pretty good overall, except for this big joint diffusion. So on this view, um, things don't show up that well, but in retrospect, on this view, it looks like there is a little bit of abnormal curvature right here, the outside of the radius has a smooth contour. The inner side is more of an abrupt contour, like 90 degrees. So right here we can see that there is some problem. Looks good here. Now we're going to put up a sagittal view where we can see things a lot better. Big joint diffusion in the elbow. Here's the ulna. This is the radius. This is the humerus. And all this white is big collection of fluid, a large uh, hemarthrosis. Now if we go to this view, we see a couple things. We see one arrow pointing to a fracture right through the radial articular surface. The black line is the bony cortex, and there's that fracture. And it was just in a plane previously we could not appreciate. And that's why it was invisible. Here we were slicing like this, this, this. And we came to the edge, it looked good. And we went to the next slice, it looked good. So we didn't go right through the middle of it. But on this view, which is 90 degrees to the last, we can see the fracture line clearly going right through the middle of the articular surface. And x-rays, this is not very displaced, so it's very difficult to see unless you just happen to catch it at the right angle. We also see there's a little cortical step off here. There's the bony cortex coming over, step off, and now it continues. But that's not why I'm showing the case. This is just bread and butter, radial fracture, radial head with a joint diffusion. But this patient also had one other finding over here, and it is related to the ligaments and tendons. So this is the medial epicondyle. We have the medial ulnar collateral ligament. Coming down here, attaching to the pointy thing, the sublime tubercle, looks completely normal. Now we look on the lateral ulnar collateral ligament and the radial collateral ligament. So the radial collateral ligament and the lateral ulnar collateral ligament, they're hard to tell them apart. They're usually just blended right together. I can't see them as two distinct structures. But in this case, I can almost imagine I do. So this is the mid portion of the radius. And there's a little band coming off here that comes up. This looks like the radial collateral ligament coming up pretty taut. Over super, uh, superficial to this, but over the top, we have the common extensor tendon, this dark band. All the muscles come together and attach to this band here. And this is the common extensor tendon. And again, deep to that, we have the radial collateral ligament. Looks like it may be partially torn from the um, humerus here, but there's another thing called the lateral ulnar collateral ligament. Remember, we have the medial ulnar collateral ligament here. The lateral ulnar collateral ligament also comes off the ulna, thus the name, and it comes off over here. You can see it coming sideways, looping around, going up. And look at that, it seems to fizzle out about right there. So this looks like a tear of the lateral ulnar collateral ligament. It's rare to catch it just right like this in plane. And it looks like it's torn near the humeral attachment, and retracted back a little bit. And in that radial collateral ligament, it looks like it may be partially torn, but um, it's not as injured as much as this lateral ulnar collateral ligament. So, in the end, it looks like we have a tear of the lateral ulnar collateral ligament, maybe a partial tear of the radial collateral ligament, and a fracture of the radial head with minimal bone displacement and a large joint fusion. Thank you very much.